How we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today we're talking about a chipper versus a chipper shredder. I don't know the difference. Do you guys? As always, we are proud to be sponsored by Bora. If you want a stability solution, feeling tippy, check out Bora. I'll link down below. Oh, and would you look at that? It says like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and check out Good Works Tractors if you want something for your tractor or skid steer. All right, so we have two units here today. These are both Wallenstein, uh, made in Canada, five-year consumer warranty on that, five years. I always feel like the warranty that a manufacturer puts behind their product is a sign of confidence in how well-built that product is. So don't overlook that, whether you're looking at, a, at one of these chippers, if you're looking at something from Frontier, Lampride, any of the other manufacturers out there, I think that's a good sign to look for. So these units are for small tractors, all right? Subcompact tractors like the 1025R, your Kubota BX and similar, or small compacts, a John Deere 2 Series, Kubota B Series or LX Series and other similar machines. Potentially you could get into some of your larger basic uh, utility or economy series like a John Deere 3025E, uh, Kubota L2501 and along that same footprint, but that's about the max. These are both Wallenstein products. The BX36S is gonna be your plain Jane chipper. This is gonna be a little bit more of the combination with the chipper and shredder. I've never used one of the shredders before. Um, I still find myself struggling to know the application. If you've had a shredder, if you've used one, I'd love to get your feedback down below. If you have a preference between just a plain chipper or a chipper shredder, that would be good to know as well. You'd help us all out. So these are both gonna be category one, three point hitch, which is standard on all of your tractors these days. 540 RPM rear PTO. There's no extra hydraulics or electrical connections that are required. So you need to have a tractor that you can run the PTO, the rear PTO off of the operator seat, which is most of the subcompact and compact tractors these days. But if you have a tractor model or a tractor series like the 3E, that doesn't allow you to run the rear PTO from off of the operator seat. There's some workarounds, you know, a sack of potatoes, a, a pile of bricks, disconnecting the safety switch. But my insurance agent makes me say this, right? Do not try this at home. This is not GWT recommended. Do it at your own risk. <laughs> Oh, and these are also quick hitch compatible. We had our flail mower on here, which is not quick hitch compatible, and just uh, took that off and put this right on without putting the quick hitch on. But rest assured, put your Spico on there, your iMatch, your Lamp Pride, it'll work with any of them. So chipping size for both of these units is close, but not the same. Three and a half inch max chipping size on the straight chipper, the BX36S, slightly less. It's gonna be three inches max on the, uh, the chipper shredder. And then up here in the shredder portion of it, it's gonna be one inch max. So a few other nice features that I've noted are there's grease zerks throughout these units, you know, and all the crucial points, which, you know, ease of maintenance is critical for something like uh, this that's gonna be in a dusty, dirty environment and to just extend the longevity of all those moving parts. They are gonna have adjustable chutes as well, so you can rotate them uh, pretty much infinitely all the way around. They'll just kind of lock into place in different locations like that. You could put it all the way to the other side if you wanted to, obviously away from your machine. 
Same thing with the, the chipper shredder as well. The knives on both of the chippers are gonna be reversible, so they're gonna have a cutting edge on either side of them, so you can get double the life out of them. You can resharpen them, but they're gonna be easy to replace. There is one bolt that you undo, and then you can, it's hinged right here on this side on both of these units, so you can flip it all the way open, have easy access to the rotor. Of course, I left my wrenches in my other truck, so I can't show you that at the moment, but uh, pretty easy access besides that one bolt, which you wanna have a solid rigid connection to keep this thing closed. So understandably, it's not a quick release. Let's talk a little bit about what a shredder actually does. You know, And again, I haven't used one, so I had to do a lot of research to figure out what's the value in a shredder besides just a chipper? And so if you have a lot of green material, leaves, uh, maybe gardens or landscape beds that you're digging out and, and, and replacing, whatever that is, a lot of green material that's small in diameter and maybe has a lot of moisture in it, if you're putting that re repeatedly into your chipper, it's gonna end up clogging it up. But when you're shoving it all down in here, there's not gonna be those flat discs that are gonna be allowed to clog up. These are just hammers or flails, knives that are just flying around at a really high speed, kind of this way right here. And there's nothing for all that material to get trapped in. It's just gonna keep pushing it through, whereas a chipper is gonna be a plate or a disc, and it's just kind of gnawing away at it as you're feeding it through on end. So there's not much room for that material to get stacked up without clogging. So with the shredder, it's just a big open chute that feeds all the way down, and these knives are kind of driving things along through the chute instead of at a perpendicular angle. So again, I sell these all over the country. You can buy them from us, we ship them. Just go right to our website, Good Works Tractors. The biggest decision you're gonna to have to make is if you want just the chipping ability or if you wanna add on the shredding ability, but you're gonna get a little bit smaller diameter of chipping size. So again, three and a half inches versus three, but you can add on the shredding ability. So if you are gonna be using this in all four seasons, you know, not just when things are dead, right? When there's no leafy material on there, but if you're gonna use it in the spring, the summer and the fall, and need to kind of shove through a whole bunch of green material, this may be the way to go. It is gonna cost more somewhere in the $1,000 ballpark, but you're gonna have more versatility, just a little bit smaller chipping size. Hey, so I'd love to get a thumbs up from you if you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button to see more. If you want something like this for your tractor, visit goodworkstractors.com. And if you have something to add, please leave a comment down below. Hey, thanks again for stopping by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. So a few notes after spending a little bit of time here chipping and shredding. Number one, if you can afford a skid steer with a mulcher head, <clears throat> That's the road I would go, although you could buy like 20 or 30 of these uh, chippers for one skid steer and shredder. It's hot, so maybe pick a, a fall day, winter day, spring day, not the, the dead middle of summer because it gets hot quickly. Um, I really like this combination, actually, because you don't have to trim off all the tops and you don't have to worry about shoving away down in there. You can just kind of shove the main branch down in there and then just pull it back out when it gets to the tiny kind of the ends of the branch shove it in the, sh in the shredder part and it takes care of it, cleans it up really easy. Uh, very quick, you can see that shredder almost sucks stuff down into it. Um, I suppose you wanna be careful not to put your hands too far down in there or let your glove get tangled up. You'd wanna be careful doing that. But we also definitely put some stuff in there bigger than three inches. I'd say it probably took three and a half ish inch, but that neck tapers down. So um, if you have any branches that you've cut off that are kind of you know, branching out and making a V or a Y or anything else, that neck, that collar, that throat is just so narrow and it's not gonna take anything that's too much larger than that. I think it would cut it if it could physically fit down in there, but that's the limitation. What do you think about forgetting your chainsaw? I don't like that I forgot my chainsaw either. Um, fortunately, I had the, the Silky, which that thing's pretty sweet, that uh, that saw, there was a lot of reviews on those on on YouTube and other places online. It's kind of the gold standard of, of those saws and that thing cuts like butter. So at least it made pretty quick work of it, but a chainsaw would have been a lot better.